This is the Tenant model 5700 scrubber sweeper. Tenant scrubbers, walk behind scrubbers, come in two varieties disc and cylindrical. Disc machine means you have two disc brushes like this. The scrub pass vary from 28 inch, 32 inch, and 36 inch. A disc scrubber means that you have to sweep the floor before you scrub it. The other configuration that you can get this machine in is cylindrical, meaning you have two cylindrical brushes like this, spinning in opposite directions. The brushes can vary from a very fine uh, white nylon for a painted floor all the way up to a heavy, heavy carbide written brush for taking off buildup and cleaning old stained floors. We're going to use the white one today because we're going to be cleaning a painted surface. The way this machine works, we've got a large tank of water on the top that holds 30 gallons of clean water. In that tank, we're going to put water as well as some type of detergent, depending on the cleaning application. I've already got some water in the machine, so we're going to skip that step. The way it works is the water is just gravity fed from this tank down to our scrub head in the front. And there's two brushes. The front brush, which is up here, and here, is spinning forward. The rear brush, which is back here, is spinning backwards, and its job is to throw any debris that's on the floor into the hopper. So when you have a tenant cylindrical scrubber, which you basically have is a machine that scrubs, sweeps, and vacuums the floor dry in a single pass. This machine is capable of picking up uh, chunks of pallet, uh, small rocks, any dirt you might have in the way and it's just going to pick them up and throw them into this hopper. What's great about the system is, is it sweeps wet. There's never any dust that gets thrown into the air using a system like this. The brushes on this machine are designed to be changed without the use of tools. Basically, we pull the cover off. Push the slides in. Hooks on the driver on the other side. pops in place like that. The other brush in the front comes out the other side. The debris hopper uh, simply slides in and hangs on this rail. So that's how we get the floor clean. Now we've got to vacuum up all the dirty water afterwards. We take a look underneath here to see a few things. First of all, I want to point out the solution valve. What that does there is it turns the water on and off. So when an operator stops with the machine, uh, maybe to move something out of the way, something like that, the water automatically turns itself off. He doesn't have to remember to, to uh, pull the lever and turn it off. Um, the uh, entire bottom of the machine is the dirty water tank. You've got access to it in the front here, and then there's two access ports here in the back. Okay. That tank holds 40 gallons of water. The way we vacuumize it, or basically turn it into a big wet vac, is we've got a vac motor underneath here, which seals up to this tank and basically vacuumizes the whole bottom of the machine. Water is then pulled up from the squeegee, which I'll show you in just a second, uh, through this hose and down into the tank. We made it 10 gallons larger than the clean water tank in an effort to protect this vacuum motor here. Also, inside the recovery tank, we have a float switch that's going to automatically turn off this vacuum motor and protect it from any moisture that might get in there um, from the vacuum system. The batteries that come with this machine are six 6-volt six batteries um, for a 36-volt system. Charger comes with it. It's fully automatic, plugs right in there. The other end just plugs into a standard 120-volt wall outlet. Uh, the, the charger is totally automatic, so we don't ever have to worry about overcharging the batteries. Um, with every machine, we send a DVD. It has a parts manual on it, service manual. Um, we have operator training videos available online. Um, it's a very easy machine to learn to use and take care of. The uh, 10 and 5700, by the way, in general, is the lowest maintenance industrial floor scrubber available. 
Titan's one of the last companies left that makes a machine that's truly built for an industrial application. Uh, they do things like make the scrub heads out of cast aluminum, uh, squeegee out of cast aluminum so it won't rust. The entire frame underneath is made of a composite material uh, so it can't corrode. All the electrical connections on it are triple sealed. Um, this machine can be run for, for a decade or more uh, and uh, just continue working. There's thousands of these in the market. It's the number one selling industrial scrubber um, in the country. And you can always get a part for this machine within a day or so. Um, that's one of the great things about Titan. Um, when you're ready to scrub with the machine, you want to put this down because you're going to seal this tank up to this one. So you want to do that. Just drop it down like this. Drop that in place. Coming around the back of the machine, take a look at the controls and the squeegee. Uh, the squeegee on this machine is, is uh, easily removed. It's just held on with two knobs. Again, cast aluminum, stainless steel band holding everything together. And to change this squeegee, all we do is, is loosen this band. And the squeegee comes right off. The reason that's important is we have to keep a sharp edge. The leading edge of the squeegee needs to be as sharp as possible. That's going to wear down over time. So when that wears out, what we do is we turn the squeegee around and we use the back of it. And once we wear out that edge, we've got two more on top. So it's got four usable edges. The front plate is not as critical. Basically, you don't need to flip it. You just need to change it whenever the rear blade wears out. So if you order a squeegee from us, we send you both. You know, again, no tools uh, to do the basic maintenance on this machine. You just tighten that back up. You'll notice the design of the squeegee is simply held on with two slotted mounts in the back. And the idea behind that is the squeegee, if you hit something, its first line of defense is it's going to swing out of the way. If you hit it hard enough, its second line of defense is it's simply going to break away and come out of its mounts rather than damage the machine. Same with our recovery hose here. There's no clamp on it, it just slips over. So we don't need to, to worry about um, you know, the hose ripping if they uh, hook the squeegee on something and tear it off. Simple adjustments for the squeegee, raise it up and down. Running the machine is really simple. All we do is we turn it on We've got a button here that's going to lower down our scrub head. We want to lower that down until the light illuminates, and that's telling us it's down low enough to, to start scrubbing the floor. And then we can adjust the down pressure. We want to always keep it in the green um, to floor conditions. On a painted floor like this, we don't need a lot of down pressure, so I'm going to keep it light. You'll see that gauge come up when I start moving. If there's too much pressure, we can back it off, or we can add pressure if need be. The vacuum system on this machine comes on automatically when I lower the squeegee. The water control is right here. And again, if you remember earlier, the water turns itself on and off. Uh, basically, the water is only going to flow when the brushes are down and spinning. Um, when I let off the controls, the brushes turn off, the water turns off. This is just going to control my rate of flow. So I'm going to go about uh, uh, medium on the water. Um, you can see we've got quite a mess to clean up here. You notice there's chunks of cardboard, wood, uh, even some little metal pieces that I put in there. Um, I just wanted to give you a good idea of the kind of things this machine could pick up. Basically, what you want to avoid uh, when you're using any type of floor cleaning equipment would be anything long and, and stringy, like banding wire, stretch wrap, um, string, anything like that, it could tend to wind up on the brushes. If that happens, it's not the end of the world. We just pull the brush out like I showed you earlier and cut it off. All right, so I'm going to make some noise now. I'm going to lower this down. You can hear the back motor turn on. And then when I start moving, and by the way, we vary the speed with the grips. Uh, by twisting it forward, the machine goes forward. Twisting it back, the machine goes backwards. Um, this, this happens to be a 32-inch version of this machine, this scrubber sweeper and it allows it to clean about 25,000 square feet per hour, realistically. So here we go. Drop that down, ready to scrub. 
with the handle, the brushes come out. I'm going to go right down the middle here to show you what it'll do. Not only is it scrubbing and sweeping, but it's vacuuming the floor completely dry. So we can have foot traffic on this machine almost immediately after using it. That's just a single pass clean there. Uh, obviously, if we go over it a couple of times, it's going to come even cleaner. What I'm trying to demonstrate to you here is this is a really fast way to get your floors clean. We figure it's probably about 20 times faster than, than mopping. Obviously, it's cleaning a lot better than a mop ever could because we're not just smearing the dirt around. We're always putting down fresh water and, and vacuuming it up with a squeegee. The machine comes with a three-year warranty for both parts and labor. I can't remember if I mentioned earlier, but this machine is American made. It's made in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can get a part or a service call on this machine generally within a day anywhere in the United States. Thank you.